is part 90 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss remote validation in MVC when JavaScript is disabled. This is continuation to part 89, so please watch part 89 before proceeding with this video. Out of the box, remote attribute only works when JavaScript is enabled. If the end user disables JavaScript, then the validation doesn't work. So this is the user registration view that we have created in the previous session. And if you notice this table TBL users, we already have a user with test1 as the username. And look at this, when I enter test1 as the username, we get that validation error right away. That's because JavaScript is enabled on my machine at the moment. And then the browser is able to issue this Ajax request to this validation method. So this is the method which gets called when we enter username in this field. And that's because within this user class, we have decorated this username property with the remote attribute. And we specified this is the method which contains the validation logic. So call this method as and when somebody types a username into this uh, field on the U UI. So how is the browser make able to make that Ajax call to this is username available method by using JavaScript. So we need JavaScript to be enabled on the browser. What happens if we disable JavaScript? Let's look at that. So to disable JavaScript, click on that setting uh, button, select settings, and then search for JavaScript, click on content settings button, and select this radio button. Do not allow any site to run JavaScript. Click done. So this has disabled JavaScript within Google Chrome now. So let's reload this view. And look at this. As I type test1, I don't get any validation error. And look at this. When I click on this create button, we are able to create another user with test1 as the username. So essentially, we have skipped the client-side validation that is enforced by the remote attribute by disabling JavaScript. And that's why it's very important to always have server-side validation so that if the end user disables the client-side validation, we still have server-side logic, which does the validation always. So to make server-side validation work when JavaScript is disabled, there are two ways. The first approach is to add model validation error dynamically in the controller action method. And we will discuss this option in this video. In our next video, we'll discuss creating a custom remote attribute and overriding the isValid method. So let's look at adding model validation error dynamically. So what's happening when we click the create button so when we click create button you know there are two create action methods here within the home controller this create action method responds to the get request whereas this one responds to the post request meaning when we click create new and when i click this create button the form get posted to the server and at that point this is the action method that gets called so within this action method what i'm going to do is we're going to check if there are any users with the username that we have provided in the UI. And if that is the case, we are going to add model validation error dynamically. So first we need to check, you know, if there are any users with the given username. And to do that, we're gonna write the same kind of logic that we have in this function, you know, db.users.any. And then we are checking if any of the user within that user's collection has got a username, you know, which matches with the username that is coming uh, into this function. So we have the user object coming into this function. Um, we can use that object and then the username property. So let's actually look at that. So if we already have the instance of database context class, so db.users, which is going to give us the list of all users in the database, dot any. And then we can check x such that x dot username equals. So this object is going to receive the properties, uh, I mean, the field values that we enter on the UI here. OK, so we will be receiving full name, username, password, all values, you know, within this object. So user dot username. So 
if this method returns true then we know for sure there is already an user with the username that we have entered here okay in that case what we need to do we're going to add model validation error so we have this model state object dot add model error function so we are going to invoke that and then specify the key the key is nothing but the property so which property username and then what is the error message that you want to specify so I'm going to use this overloaded version where we can specify the error message as a string so maybe something like username is already in use okay so when we add validation error like this to the model state what's going to happen it's going to turn this is valid property to false in that case it's not going to execute this logic so it doesn't get inside that if block and it comes back to this return view and then it's going to render that create view back to the user okay so let's build this and let's reload this view and at the moment JavaScript is still disabled on the browser. So now look at this. When I type test1 as the username, and then when I tab away, we don't get that validation error. But then look at this. When I click this create button, the form will get posted to the server. And on the server side, this HTTP post method is going to check, OK, is the provided username is there within the list if that's the case add this model validation error username is already in use uh, to the model state object and then it checks you know is model state valid that's going to return false so it comes back and returns the view and passes that user object okay and we get the error as expected okay but then one thing we have to keep in mind is that delegating the responsibility of performing validation to a controller action method violates separation of concerns within MVCA. So ideally, all validation logic should be in the model. And then if you look at you know this user model here, look at that. To validate model data, we need to use attributes. That should be the preferred approach. Validation attributes are there for that purpose. And it's the responsibility of the model you know, to check if model data is valid or not. It's not the responsibility of the controller. So by moving this logic to check if there are any validation, uh, I mean, validation errors into the controller, we are violating separation of concerns within MVCA. Okay, so in our next video, we'll see how to customize this remote attribute. So this is the code that we have just discussed, which adds model validation error dynamically within the controller action method. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.